Hello people of YouTube and welcome to yet another Ludi rant, I mean Ludi video. Today we're gonna talk about the best releasable vassals in the game. I'm talking about vassals that once you release, you feel like your PP pee grew a couple of inches, okay? This is the type of vassals we're talking about here. And obviously, amongst them, we're gonna have the nation of Byzantium. Okay, fine, it's not a releasable vassal, that's why it's the first on this list, but let's face it, it gets eaten up by the Ottomans instantly at the start and then after you release it they have all of these juicy cores that you can feed them up in the uh, the Balkans essentially everybody knows no CB Byzantium or if Byzantium is gone take one province with the Greek Byzantine uh, cores from the Ottomans release Byzantium and feed them back the cores that is the strat to kill the Ottomans early game and one of my favorite st strats if I'm playing as basically anybody in the Mediterranean second up on this list is obviously Obviously, for the best of reasons, the nation of Syria. Now, Syria at the start is mo mainly a part of the Mamluks, but there's cores of Syria in uh, Fadl as well as Akoyunlu and Karakoyunlu. So, by taking again one province and feeding back all of these cores, you essentially end up having like what 200 or something development from these provinces. Well, probably not 200. I'm guessing like 150. Some of these are really high though, like 20 development, 16, 11, 20. 10, 13, yeah, basically almost all of them are really high dev. The ones on the eastern parts are mainly 3 development, 4 development, because this is desert tiles essentially. But still, great vassal, and it's a great way of uh, destroying either the Mamluks or the Ottomans if they did take over the Mamluks at some point in the game. And it's especially great if you make these guys as a vassal whenever you're trying to form the Roman Empire, because every province that Syria has is required for you to form the Roman Empire, I think. I think it is. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Obviously, next on this list is going to be Nogai with the Kazakh vassal. Kazakh can be released and then you have basically all of those Beki lands as well as Shagatai lands as your core provinces. A ridiculously powerful vassal. Now, the problem with Kazakh is that you don't normally release this vassal if you're playing as a horde. And in 90% of the cases, it is a horde that you're going to be playing with that has lands in this area. Or alternatively, it can be the Muscovites. In fact, I personally really like to release Kazakh as uh, the Muscovites when I'm conquering the Siberian steppes so that I can form my uh, Russian Empire borders, which is obviously the main thing you're going for if you're forming Russia, am I right? Not as useful when it comes to hordes, but definitely super useful when it comes to basically anybody else to release and feed cores back. Next up is Zenashon of Multan with their beloved Punjabi Vasalan. Punjab once more proves that it's not about the pun, it's about the job. <laughs> I'll stop making jokes now, I promise. I know that was extremely cringe and horrible. But anyway, yeah, these guys have cores on a lot of provinces here, and especially for your true heir of Timur achievement, if you're going for it as Afghanistan or any of the uh, vassals of the Timurids at the start, releasing Punjab, normally you release it from uh, Kashmir, or if not, you can release it from Multan, depending on what RNG is thrown at you and whatever alliances are at the beginning of the game. With Punjab, you can feed up all of these lands here or alternatively if you can vassalize uh, Delhi you can do the same with Delhi they have a lot more cores but the problem is that Delhi a lot of the times gets uh, formed by Sir Hind after Sir Hind uh, kills Delhi so uh, it's more viable that you do Punjab rather than uh, Delhi plus Punjab is the area where most likely you're gonna get the six spawn in and Punjabs actually have pretty great national ideas so if you want to play as them they're one of the best military nations in the Indian subcontinent now Next up on this list is a vassal that is one of my personal favorite vassals. Let me tag into Brandenburg here. Oh no, Ludi, he used the console, bro. We're going to be vassalizing the nation of Lubeck. Daria go, boys. Lubeck is one of the best vassals to have as Brandenburg or as any nation in this area here because Lubeck has a huge amount of the Lubeck trade node. So by asking Lubeck to divert trade towards you, you get all of that chunk from the Lubeck trade node for yourself. Right now, they have 18% of the trade node, which would be your 18%, and it makes it so that you get a lot of money. As Brandenburg, normally, whenever I do my uh, Brandenburg runs, I prefer to uh, vassalize Lubeck. The sooner, the better, because my economy skyrockets right after I vassalize them and I get them to divert trade towards me, which is why Lubeck is on this list. It's not a releasable vassal. It doesn't have a lot of cores, but the trade value that it adds to any nation that has it as a vassal is absolutely 
absolutely amazing. And to be more precise why uh, Lubeck is such a great nation, not only does it start with a massive chunk of the uh, Lubeck trade node, but it has the potential to get even more, even though it stays as a one province miner because of its mission tree, you get the sound toll that offers 15 flat trade power and 25 percentage trade power in the city of Lubeck early on in the game. By doing that and making Lubeck the ultimate trade city, you secure yourself as the overlord that has all the money. Speaking of trade vassals, another really great trade vassal is of course Ragusa. For the exact same reasons as Lubeck, Ragusa is a trade city. It's a nation that can form a trade league, but as a trade vassal, again, you get a massive chunk of this particular node here. 9% at the start. Considering it's a one province miner, this 9% is a massive deal. If you develop this province a little bit, you help them out a little bit as well. You can improve that a little bit more. You can even feed them some of the coastline provinces and as such you get a bigger chunk of the Ragusan trade note here whilst you're not really losing too much if you just give them like the coastline provinces for example. Next up my boys is of course the famous two south vassals of France. <laughs> the English normally what they do if they want to kill off the French is they release the nation of Gascony from the south part of uh, France here in these two provinces and then Gascony can eventually get cores well can get their cores that they start with on the south part of uh, France. Same goes for Toulouse. Toulouse has cores on basically the other half of uh, France in the south. Gascony together with Toulouse is basically most of South France. So whenever you're doing a Roman Empire conquest or whenever you just want to kill off the French, you get in the first war two provinces from the French. Normally, if it's the Castilians or the Aragonese, you get Foix and Carcassonne because these are really low development provinces, seven dev and six dev, and you can release Gascony from Foix and you can release uh, Toulouse from Carcassonne or whatever the provinces. But just remember the first province you release the vassal from, you want it to be low development province so you don't waste too much aggressive expansion on that province, right? Imagine, you take 22 development province and you just release it as a vassal. That's not big brain right there. Next up on the list is a nation that does not start as a integrated nation, but a nation that 90% of the times gets divided between the French and the Austrians, and I'm talking about Burgundy. And remember, Burgundy keeps their cores on all of this stuff, so if you just take one province that has Burgundian cores, like say Salon over here in the south, you can feed back all of their cores from from, uh, the French or from the Austrians or whoever got the Burgundian inheritance. So keep that in mind because I know this is oftenly overlooked, especially in the mid game after the Burgundians disappear. Remember, they still have the cores around and it's almost guaranteed that they will disappear, at least in 90% of the games. And since we are in this area, we can also talk about the two special vassals of Castile, Leon and Asturias. Why are these two special vassals? Well, first off with the cores, but more importantly, they start off with uh, colonists. Yeah, there you go. Asturias has the colonist so eventually you can actually get Asturias to colonize the new world for you help you out with colonizing wow these actually are really great ideas man one merchant one missionary manpower goods produced missionary strength colonist and diplomat what these are great ideas for a world conquest man like you get all the stuff that you need here to be more precise great ideas for a one faith world conquest actually what the snaps man Asturias has been hiding out on us boys holy mother of god since uh, we are talking about nations that are great once they're eaten up, of course, you can also talk about the Timurids. Not always, but 50% of the times the Timurids disappear because they get eaten up by their vassals. And just look at the sheer amount of cores they start with. Even if they get destroyed and they just have these cores and nothing else, look at this. This is absolutely insane, the amount of cores here. It would be a problem to integrate them afterwards, considering the fact that this is probably like a thousand, not, not a thousand dev. This is like maybe 800 development or something like that let's say there's like a lot of other uh, vassals that you can release especially in Ming there's a ton of them there's also a ton of vassals in Lithuania I also want to add one more vassal and that is uh, some vassal that I personally think is extremely useful for the Muscovites for example talking about Astrakhan Astrakhan has seven provinces and normally whenever you attack the Great Horde you take all of this in one war plus one province in Ukek and then you release from Ukek Astrakhan which is seven dev and in the second war you take all of this 
this for Astrakhan from the Great Horde. So in two wars, you finished all of the Great Horde and you don't even get too much aggressive expansion because you released Astrakhan and all of these juicy provinces here. And some of them are really high development provinces as well, right? It's definitely underrated in my opinion, Astrakhan, because I know not many people playing as Muscovy release Astrakhan and feed them back. Although they should. Astrakhan and Kazakhs for the Muscovite runs are absolutely mandatory in my opinion. So if you guys enjoyed this short Vassals video, consider subscribing. Check me out on Twitch. You'll find a link in the description and I'll see you guys over there.